It's a joy to be joined by the fist pumping, hug dispensing, dad dancing, uber passionate genius who turned 30 years of Liverpool fans' dreams and yearning into reality. Jurgen Klopp. Oh, hurts like a glute bunch. <laughs> Hello, whoa, what an introduction. I, think, I thought already, who's he talking about? Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, nice to you, see you again. You are now immortal in Liverpool, a city in which thousands of babies will be called Jurgen Norbert Hopefully in nine months' time. Oh. It's true. <laughs> Brace yourself, but the glory comes after a journey of losses in finals, League Cups, Europa League, Champions League, crushingly to Real Madrid, that led English papers, they love to do this kind of thing, to talk about you as a glorious failure, a nearly man. You're now very much a winner, the Champions League and the Premier League. How has that changed your sense of self? Isn't it nice? Two things. Um, still, it all feels the same. I'm the same person than before. And the other thing, it's a nice, it's a nice lesson for life um, that um, losing doesn't mean you lose forever. It just means uh, you lost. Um, if you learn of it, it can be the most important day in your life. And that's what we tried to do. But it only happened because um, of the power of this club, because of the extraordinary mentality of this group of players and um, they wanted inside they had this massive desire to to strike back to to make the, the the next step to make the final step and that made it happen so and i'm really happy and proud that i've been and that i'm part of it um, and exactly that's how it feels a lot of things happened in the last few weeks on a football on the football side which were really really nice and enjoyable and in, that's in a time where the whole world is obviously suffering and, and has a lot of problems and um, it's nice that we could uh, give some at least some entertainment to, to, to some people um, out there and really happy about that. I say this as an Everton fan, your Liverpool have been a light in the darkness when the world has needed one and you individually are the master of passion and motivation. We watch you motivate players like no other. This last season, with its surreal pause, was more of a grueling ultra marathon than any that came before it. When you find yourself tired and exhausted, inevitably, what do you do to reignite your own fire and keep it burning for yourself? I sleep. <laughs> that helps. That helps. Mostly, I feel only exhausted and tired at night. And uh, sometimes in the afternoon, and by the time I have uh, another nap, so I don't, I don't like energy, to be honest. It's the things I do, I love, I love to do. Um, so it's, it's easy to be, to be motivated myself to come in every day. And uh, when we, when we are, since we are allowed to again and work together with these players, because um, my whole life, I loved good football players. Um, maybe one reason for it was I wasn't one. <laughs> so now already since like around what, 20 years, I worked, I worked together with sensational players and, um, and this group here now is absolutely special. And so it's easy for me. I, I don't like, I, I don't like um, um, de desire or, 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 or passion or energy. The reason is, I, I think, I don't know 100%, but I am Christian and I think, I think life is a gift and um, you have how you, how you treat gifts. And you get a, when you get a Christmas gift, for example, a present, whatever, then you treat it better carefully and, and with attention and, um, and, you, and you, you make sure that, it's all, that it all, it's all is well with it. And that's how I think how we should deal with life. It doesn't work always. We are human beings. We are weak. We have, we have weaknesses and, we, and, and other issues. Um, but um, as long as I'm really aware uh, of the things and oh, the emotions don't overcome me, what happens from time to time, I try to deal with life like this and um, that's what keeps me going. The players have been amazing. Your coaches are also unbelievable. I need to ask you though about your owners, Boston's, Boston, Massachusetts's Fenway Sports Group. They are proof... Oh, thank God that America's doing something right in the football world. <laughs> Delivering glory for Liverpool as they did win with the Boston Red Sox in 2004. Have you noticed something different in them than other European traditional football owners that you've worked with, Jürgen? It's interesting because we, I never worked before with owners. They, I can, it's easy to say for me they are by far the best owners I ever worked together with because of the first ones. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but it's uh, it's just it's a great relationship. Look, and then for me, it was a big. Um, I had to make the experience. How how will it be with people? They own the club, and what do they want to do? But um, the, the guy I work obviously most of the time really close together with is Mike Gordon, and uh, we became friends. And that's um, that's pretty it's pretty easy to become friends with him because I'm a wonderful guy, one of the smartest people I ever met in my life, and he really takes care for this club. He really is he really is responsible for pretty much everything, and it's nice to share a responsibility with somebody like him. Because obviously we are here in Liverpool, far away, and um, t some time difference in between. So when we all have our problems, it's possible that he's still in bed. <laughs> Not because he sleeps that long, just because they're five hours behind and stuff like this. <laughs> but it's just, it's just wonderful. I'm really happy that we um, can make this uh, FSG, Mike, John, Tom, th this present as well. I know how much it means to them. It was last year already unbelievable when, um, when we won the Champions League and uh, Mike used the, uh, the, the, the American tradition, which I'm not used to, um, to, to, to produce a, a championship ring for me. And um, I cannot wear it, obviously, as a German. I think the Americans wear it, but I can. Oh, it's yes. Massive. It's just massive. And, um, and, um, but it's really, nice. it's really nice to have. And um, yeah, and now a year later, we are where they thought we should be, or yeah, in the future, ten years ago when they when they bought the club. It's absolutely. Yep. Tom Werner's like five rings, Jurgen, five rings. Oh, <laughs> while we're talking about America, one quick word on Christian Pulisic, a player you coached back in your Dortmund days. In that Chelsea game before you lifted the title trophy, he came on, and within 153 seconds. Oh, he did something very naughty to the Liverpool bat line, then added an exclamation point goal. You looked on and nodded with approval. Can you explain what was going through your mind as you did say? First of all, I was, about, I was happy that he didn't start. <laughs> <laughs> but when he came on, um, uh, when he came on, it was unbelievable what the player is. I, I, I knew him when he, since he was, was it 15 or 16, it was very, yeah. very, very, very young. And uh, when he joined training at Dortmund, it was like in a, in a comic. Like um, a little boy um, had the ball, five, six old players want to get it. And then in the end, you see only dust and one is going and coming out and was Christian. So I knew it will be a big career, but um, and I would love, would love to work together with him, obviously, but it never happened. That's how life is, um, right moment. For, life is all about timing and it didn't happen. Now he's in a really good club with, with, um, um, with Chelsea and he's doing well. He's doing how, really big, how big can he be? Very. I don't want to put pressure on him, but you have to only look in his passport. There's a number. There's not a number in, but uh, I think he's born in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Um, two thousand and one. Uh, no, ninety nine. Ninety nine. I think. I think he's twenty one now. So very, very young. Very young. The whole world is open and um, for him, and he's a really a brilliant player and a super talent. On the day Liverpool won the Premier League title, you had to quit an interview with Sky Sports because you were overcome with emotion. Remarkable to witness because we normally see the clop of hugs, fist bumps, that gregarious laugh. We don't often get to see this side of you. It's a big moment. I cannot. I, I have no real words, to be honest. Um, I, I, it's, it's such a big moment. I'm completely overwhelmed. I never would have thought that it, that it would feel like this. I have no idea. And um, it's just big. Sorry, gentlemen. Yeah. Um, see you. All the best. In the moment of victory, it was as if the mask dropped and we saw the real Jurgen Klopp. Can you describe what emotions hit you in that moment of victory? Unfortunately, you see most pretty much all the time the real Jurgen Klopp. That's my problem. That's why my face looks like my face looks in a lot of moments. And um, no, in this moment, I was just I was not prepared for the for the emotions which went through my body because um, all the feelings. Um, I was just. Uh, um, how can you be prepared for that? I don't know. You cannot, uh, you cannot self-control yourself or something. It overcame me in this moment. I saw, I think it was when Kenny and, and Graham were on, 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 on the other side of the... Kenny Dalgleish and Graham uh, yeah, in studio. So and it, it felt so big in that moment and I, I couldn't hold back. So that's how it is. I have no problem with that. It's not that I want to cry in front of millions of people. But um, yeah, I couldn't stop. And by the way, before that already, I thought I'm, I'm over it. But before that, when I called my missus at home, um, I couldn't speak a word. So, um, yeah, that, you know, look, when you're in a situation, and I never felt the real pressure. I knew about the pressure, but I didn't feel it. 
But um, when you then, when things um, work out and, and, and click in the end and you have, um, and, and you made it somehow, then obviously the relief um, is big. And, uh, and the pr then you feel not the pressure, but you feel how the pressure eases away and, 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 and disappears. And that was the moment when obviously um, some things in my body thought, okay, open the gates and uh, that happened. Last question, Jürgen, win or fail beautifully? Your mantra, beautiful, in a way that transcends sports. How would you translate that advice for viewers watching across America at home so that they can live your words of wisdom in their own lives? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, let me say it like this. It's, um, um, you have to give your absolutely everything if you want something. Because it's, it's the, but it doesn't give you a guarantee to get anything, but it's the only chance to get something. So, and that's, that, that's how I understand it. That means, um, don't worry, just, just give it a proper, a proper try. In the end, you have enough time to think about if it, if it worked out or not. But until the final whistle, in our case, you just try everything. You have five minutes to play, give it a try. Come on, three, three goals down, give it a try. One does only happen if some people start believing in them. That's, I, I, I ever, I ever um, believed in things like this. I'm probably educated by sports movies in the past. And a few days ago, I saw the movie Rudy. Uh, I, I don't know when it came out, 1990 something probably. Rudy Rüdiger, Rudy, Rudy, probably. Uh, I saw it. Rudy Crow. That's my. That's my story, not my story, but I love this story. So, and it's unbelievable um, how this, how <laughs> the belief he had against him in comparison with him, we are all like this. It's true, the Rudy, heart heart. Rudy, Rudy is the Origi story. You can always come on and you can always shoulder that ball into the net. To you, Jurgen Klopp, thank you for inspiring the world to become <laughs> mentality monsters. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you very much. Cheers, bye-bye. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7am Eastern on NBCSN. And for more than 1,400 hours of exclusive Premier League content, make sure to visit nbcsports.com gold.